Hello, let's talk about the tasks for this week. This week we're going to talk about for loops, while loops, and we have a quiz. It's going to be pretty easy. And then we have assignment two and assignment three. It's super easy, both of them. Then remember that the assignments are due at the, day, at the end of the day, each Sunday. So you can submit it at any time, but you have up, up, up until Sunday to submit the assignment. And assignment number two is based on the example that we did, which you're going to ask the customer for the quantity of items that they want to purchase. Uh, you're going to ask for price. Could be not necessarily because you're talking to a customer, but you're talking to a di another uh, system. Say you're the one in charge of your your code is in charge of communicating with FedEx to know um, how much it cost to send a package. So you're gonna ask one customer for how many bags of coffee they want to send, and then you're gonna ask FedEx for what's the price of um, of a box, whatever. So long story short, you're gonna ask um, on the console, you're gonna ask what's the quantity, what's the price, and then you're gonna take that quantity and that price. Um, this is an int, remember. Unless you can do float and you wanna have 1.5 quantities, that's okay too. And then you're gonna have for, uh, ask for price, this is a float or a double. So it could be double or float. I would do a double because it's not, not doesn't have to be very precise. And then you have to multiply the quantity, the price, and the tax rate. And the tax rate is 8%. So it's going to be 1 plus 8 divided by 100. But just this part is divided by 100. Not uh, not one, right? So basically, it's going to be one point zero eight. This is at the end what you need to at the end what you have to multiply by. So. Your quantity could be any name, Q, quantity, the whole word. The price is going to be, a, you're going to ask the price. And at the end, you're going to have another variable. Could be total, whatever you want. You have price times quantity and the tax, which is 1 plus 8 divided 100, or 1.08. And then you're going to print total value. So for printing, we can use, and we're going to look into that more today. We can use F print, um, or you can use C console out. Both of them are very simple. You can use this or that. Okay. So an example of how to do it, the flow is right here. So you want to know the total price, say is $10 and the tax is eight percent so you want to know how many items you're going to get you're going to get uh, get the tax for each of them add the tax and then print the total and we did that example already so you can copy most of it or all of it and work from it or just look into how i did this and to get an idea so right here i'm using c out and um, you can use C out or F print. So let's talk about loops. Loops are a basic and fundamental uh, aspect of programming. And loops help you find the... Um, help you perform um, operations based on iterations. So conditions are needed to specify how many times um, loop runs. So a loop is, for example, the days of the week, right? So 
um, for the Earth rotating around the Sun, one revolution is one day. And do that for thousands of years. Right? Loop will allow you, or the programmer, to repeat instructions. That's called iterations. While the loop conditions are true, the program will run the task in the loop. So there are some conditions here, which the designer or the programmer has to implement, and there are going to be actions that are performed. While the conditions are true based on the actions, your loop is going to run. If the conditions here reach a point where the, condi where the conditions up here are not true anymore, the loop is going to stop. So always when you build your body of your loop, make sure that you have in mind what's going to happen to your condition up here. Because a lot of errors can happen if your conditions are not updated properly, and this can run forever. This could become a virus because there's no way of stopping it unless you turn off the computer or if you're saving a file. So this could be pretty annoying if you don't control it. But once you control your loop, then you can perform thousands and millions of operations that are repeatable, but just changing a constant or changing a parameter and um, it's very useful for programming. So there are two types, the for loops and the while loops. Again, why do we use loops in programming? So at least for C++, C++ will loop a range of values so that you can iterate over the standard library containers, strings, and arrays. And this is what goes into your body of your loop. Actions are derived from things like containers, strings, and arrays. So for instance, an array, so you have a list of objects. So you have a list of different brands of cars. So there are different brands in this array. So you want to loop through different brands so that you can find a filter. When you filter through the guy's mileage or the um, color so that you can see what the cars on your um, database are uh, saved. So that will probably be a for loop so that it goes all over your database. And for the cars that apply to the conditions that you specified, then you're going to print them. You can add support of range-based for loop of your own types by supporting the iterator interface. The iterator interface, which we're going to see very soon, a couple of slides, is what controls your for loop. So say you go one loop and then come back to the controller part and says the iterator says that conditions are not completed. Go again. The iterator said conditions are completed, then jump out of the loop. So we're going to talk about iterators in a second. There are less reasons to use bug prone for loops. So when you use index indexes, or say when you talked about the car, they're indexing each element of the array. You have to index it with the iterator. And since the for loop is done by the computer, then you have less lines programmed into your code. The rule of thumb is less lines, less errors, more lines, more errors. So as if you manage to program your code with um, as few lines as possible, then your probabilities of getting errors and bugs are less. So as we talked before, the for loop is one type of loop. And the for loops run given conditions or parameters from iterators. So the iterator could be i, sometimes called j, x, a, whatever. So your iterator, type int, for example, will say for e, the variable e equals 1 to 10. So it's going to say go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or during those 10 operations, 
you have a universe of possibilities to, to perform actions. So for instance, when iterator equals five, when your iterator equals five, um, do a break and check for system errors and continue. So you can go from I equals zero to 100 million. So it's gonna take a while, but basically as the controller will tell the, the program for how long your loop needs to run. Okay, so we'll see examples in a few slides. Um, but this is how you set your for loop in C++. It's different for Python or Fortran and different languages. So this is specifically for C++, the syntax, but the concept is the same in every language. So you need to say for. When you say for, the compiler knows that you are creating a for loop. So for, you need to put the condition in parentheses and then you need to open, open your brackets. The body of your for loop is going to be within the brackets. The conditions are your iterator your limit your limit this is the iterator your limit and how is the iterator going to iterate so i call it jump is it going to go one by one so I plus plus means one by one. Or if you'd say um, I plus two, every two iterations is gonna be zero, two, four, six, etc. So this is how you say how you wanna go through your loop. So is it just one, 51, and that's it? Or you want to be from one to 11 to 21 to 31 to 91 and that's it or you can want every single number from 1 to 11 sorry from 1 to 100 so instructions string point oh sorry starting point end point and the increment or jump the increment could be negative so if you start from 100 and go to 1 then you can say i minus minus but in this case it would be 100 and then it would be 1 so this is the basic construction of a for loop. You have the word for, the constructor, which will be instructions, starting point, end point, and increment, and the body of your for loop within the brackets. You, t you have to tell the compiler which type of variable you have. So to make sure that the compiler doesn't get confused, you can say out of, so that when you say auto, you only use the i variable for the loop. Um, or you can say int. If you know that you're only going to have numbers, this could be int as well. But if you're doing characters, then auto will recognize um, if it's character or int. Right, so auto tells the compiler to deduce the type of the variable. So this could be useful sometimes. Let's do one example. Let's look at the example on C++. So let's create a new file and let's copy or let's write down this example. So we're gonna do uh, the header, which is the include Then we're going to create an end function. First is the header, which we're going to include the, um, the library for standard um, classes. So then we're going to create a function where this is going to be our body inside the brackets. And we know that at the end, we have to do a return zero, which is successful with no errors. If our compiler gets to return zero with no errors, then we should have, we should be able to run our code. Now, if the logic within the code is bad, that's a different story. 
the first thing is making sure they don't have any compilation errors. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a function. No, we're going to create a constant int m equals zero. So int m equals zero. What this is, is that we're going to create a iterator for a for loop. So because what we're doing, what we want to do is we're going to take this while loop, which we're going to see later we're going to see later this week how the while loop works, which I'm showing right here is the simplest loop. You have a condition and then you have um, iterator and then you have the increment. So I'm going to use this to create a for loop so that you can see the difference between while and for loop. And later when you see the while loop, then it's going to be already familiar. Then what we want to do is we want to create a for loop instead of the while loop. And we know that for the for loop, we have to do the M So first of all, we can say this, we can avoid one line and say int m equals zero to m less than five and semicolon m plus plus. All right, we're gonna create another bracket for the for loop and the body of the for loop is going to go here and here we're going to use since we're going to use printf we imported the header for the console um, the header for the console standard input output and then we're going to do print f So when you copy the when you copy and paste code from the PDF or the PowerPoint or online, make sure that it copies the right format. Sometimes when you copy text, the quotation mark um, is not copied, or for some reason is a different quotation mark is just one. So that will create errors. So sometimes when you copy code and you see errors, make sure that you copied and pasted the whole code. I'm saying that because you don't have to write down every single line if you don't want. You could just copy paste the the code right here or your Visual Studio, whatever you're using. So let's go ahead and create the text. This is iteration percent b backslash n then comma my constant okay so let's save it All right. Save. And then we have to get the semicolon. No errors. And this is the code. And let's run it. And then we have, this is iteration zero, one, two, three, four, because we're going from M equal to zero to five. Therefore we're going zero, one, two, three, four. Um, percent D's because we're doing an int 
and I want to show you something. If you have a for loop with only one line, you don't need the brackets. But this is only if the for loop has one line. No errors. You run it. That's good. So you can go for m less n equal to 5. So we're going to go six iterations from 0 to 5 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You recompile, you run it. Now we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is in total six iterations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's very common to start from 0 because later when we do our race, you'll notice that we will have to start from 0 since arrays will have their rows and columns indexing at zero. So we'll see that later. So let's start by including the header, include. And notice that before we had console standard input output. This is because this comes from C. In C++, we have standard input output dot H. So you can pretty much use either or. The thing is that you have to know that if we do console out standard input output, then and you save it as a C++, you're combining C and C++, which is actually pretty common um, and not is not necessarily right or wrong. Um, some people like to have only C++ and some people are OK combining C and C++ as long as it works. So I'm showing you several ways of inputting different headers as long as you know which header goes with what you need then that's good because then you don't have to input a bunch of headers for instance you wouldn't have to input both of them since only one of them is needed again printf is um, in standard input output and in console standard input output but this one is for C and this one is for C++ but when you save C++ and you call this, um, the compiler knows that you're using that header since C++, once again, is built on top of C. So let's use this, this one instead, standard input output h. And we're going to create our famous main function with returning uh, zero, semicolon. And then this is where we're going to have everything in our code. So we're going to create an array, int grid, and it's going to be 5,2, 5,2, semicolon. And what this means is that we're going to have, let's create a block of comments. This is a block of comments. So this is for block your a block of comments. Therefore, everything that you write in here is going to be a comment. So we're going to have uh, an array of five columns, and two rows. Sorry, five rows and two columns. The first one is the rows. The second is the columns. So read. equals, there you go, 4 and 5. So this is 0, 0, this is 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, and this is the same thing but now is column one, the same thing, but now is column, sorry, the same thing, but now is, oh, I did this the other way around, column one, oh yeah, this is true, this is one, one, this is two, 
one this is three one this is four one yes because this is column zero and this is column one and this is row zero row one row three row etc okay so grid as you notice is this array of arrays so it's a two by two array sorry it's a two-dimensional array it's five by two excellent so we're gonna have an int actually let's call that int insider for loop so we're trying to get to this for loop so for and then our condition inside our block since we're gonna have more than one line we need the brackets so instead of x let's do i int i well, let's do int x, since we have x in this example, semicolon, oh, x equals 0, you have to initialize x, for x less than 5, and that's because it's going to go to 4, and remember that even though the size is 5, since you're starting 0, it's going to be 5 minus 1 is 4, okay, and then semicolon, x plus plus, which we're going to be incrementing by 1, in this condition here, we want to have access to our array, or well, to the array. So we're going to be accessing our rows and our first column, which is equal to x plus 1. In other words, whenever we are position 1, we're going to put 0 plus 1 equals 1. And then this one is going to be 2. And then this one is going to be three and then this one is going to be four and then here we're going to go x minus eight, less than five yes put four plus one which is five excellent so semicolon then we're going to do the second one which is all the rows column one and then this is going to be this part So what we have in this first or well the second column, we're going to have what's uh, located in the first column, which is this number, one, two, three, four, five times ten. Okay, so this is going to be one times ten is sorry, it's well ten. Two times ten is twenty. This one is going to take it to 30, 40, and 50. So this part shows you how to access the array, and this is what we put it into the array. And same thing here for the first column and the second column. Semicolon. Um, and let's go ahead and print within the same for loop, so we don't have to create a whole new for loop for that. So let's do a print f. Let's put the same column right away so I don't forget. We're going to do. What are we going to be printing? We're going to be printing grid. First, all columns, sorry, all, all column, all rows in first column, comma, all rows in second column or column 0 and column 1, all rows column 1. Okay, and in here we have to tell a print that we want to print it. So since it's int, we're defining it as int. Int that's going to do my first grid, um, or my first value. So this is just a number, which is this, one, two, three, four, five. And we want to print in position. So let's go ahead and do the same thing that we have in the print F from the example here. And we're going to do another percentage D because it's another int. And then we should be able to run it. Okay, so if you print this, 
compile it first, and then run it, then you're gonna have exactly that. You're gonna print v, you're gonna print an int, which corresponds to all the rows in column one, which is this guy. So basically we're printing one, two, three, four, five. Comma, or sorry, column, another int, end of line, and that other int is the second column, all the rows. And that is precisely what we have here. So I'm gonna close all my executables and just run the latest one. Yes, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So this is how the for loop works. Since I have more than a line, then I have to use my block um, brackets. Notice that I have another for loop that I don't need because I can say, print this here. instead. So try to use as many, sorry, as few for loops as possible because another for loop will use more memory and more time and more execution um, power. So we can do all that in only one for loop. Okay, let's go to another example. Now we're going to use another for loop to print this grid that has three by three um, positions in the array, and then array will not have ints. Now we're gonna have characters, and the character is gonna be a dot. So remember that, that this point right here is zero, zero, and this point is zero, one, and zero, two, and all the way to this point right here is, is, being, is two, two, because this is 0, 1, this is 1, 1, sorry, this is, this is 0, 2, this is 1, 2, and this is 2, 2. Let's look at it uh, from the example. Call this example two, CPP, and run, enter. Excellent. So we have, let's look at the code. We have our header because we're gonna use uh, printf. Um, we're gonna ca call my character array. So tic-tac-toe is an array that holds nine elements, three rows and three columns. Right, if you see your output has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements, and they're organized in three by three in a grid or a mesh. Okay, so we're going to use what it's called a nested loop, which we're going to see in a minute. And nested loops, what we they do is that they run loops within loops. So I want to run the example first and then show you what they are because I think that this will be easier. Nested loops are basically loop, loops within loops. So first of all, we have our array and it's type characters because it's dots and not just, it's not going to be numbers. And we're going to have two um, ints, X and Y. So, um, as you know, you you can always just declare them inside the for loop so that you know that there are variables that only used within your um, for loop. This x and y will not be used um, later for other stuff. So if you want to use x and y for other stuff within your code, then you have to initialize them again later. At this point, they're only going to be used for your block of four loops. So X is going to go from 0 to less than 3, meaning from 0 to 2. That's three numbers, 0, 1, and 2. And it's going to go increment by 1. 
y is going to go from 0 to 2, so 0, 1, 2, increment by 1. And then it's going to go over the grid of characters called tic-tac-toe. So what it's doing is that when x equals 0, then it's going to be y well equal. Let's print this again. So basically the first case is going to be x equals 0, y equals 0, this guy right here. So it's going to save a dot. Then the second case is going to stay within this inner loop. So x still 0, but y now is 1. So here, x equals 0, y is 2. So this one right here. Now, outer loop, x equals 1, and y equals 0. So here, and so on and so forth. Then once it's done with the for loop, writing the characters within the array, it's going to write tic-tac-toe on the screen. And then the second nested for loop is to output each dot with a percent %c, because it's characters, with, um, with on the screen. So it's going to do uh, tic-tac-toe. So it's going to go the first row, all the columns. Once it's done with that for loop, is going to jump line then it's going to go the second row all the columns then jump line and we'll do the last row all the columns notice that if you get rid of the int x and int y even though you declared up here it's going to say error it doesn't know what x is and that is because, as we said before, this is only declared for the for loop, not for the whole program. So keep that in mind. So we run it now. We have no errors. Excellent. I'm going to introduce another very useful library, which is called the vector library. And this is um, a library that we're going to use later for our project. And this library is extremely useful for doing operations with numbers because arrays are variables that they organize data, but vectors are actual mathematical constructs. So um, vectors are, they have properties and they um, have much more content than does arrays. Arrays are lists of objects, vectors are specifically meant to hold a um, system of numbers or system of equations or um, no, or a system or information about a system in an organized fashion. So let's look at this example and so that we can introduce the vector the vector library. It's going to be example three vector. Okay, and run it. Perfect. So let's look at this. Okay, so we're going to have the same headers in iStream because we're going to do C out on one of the loops. For that, we're going to use iStream, input output stream, and then we're going to use the vector library because we're going to start using um, templates. So we're going to use a standard namespace because, as we said, we need the template like um, from C++. And we're going to create global variables. So these are our first global variables. Global variables for rows and global variables for columns. Very well. So we're going to start our main function. I'm going to return zero for success. And we're going to create a matrix called vector or a vector of vectors. So a matrix is a vector of vectors. 
And right here, we're going to create a vector of vectors type int. So we can only put int in within this vector. And then we're going to create a second array, but this or a second vector. And this is 1D vector. This is a 2D, so it's a matrix. And this is a 1D, so it's just one vector. It's called V1. We're going to have an int equals num equals 0. So this is a type int called num. And within our for loop, we're going to have int i equals 0 for i less than rho. So from i less than 2 is going to be 0 and 1, and when increment by 1. Okay. A second for loop is going to go j equals 0, j less than call or 2, and j increment by 1. So notice that the global variables are defined outside of your main function. And this is because they could be used for all the main function and other functions later on if you want to build on top of this for the project or for homeworks. So what is doing on the second loop is that is writing a number. So the first number is zero, and then he's saying num equals whatever number is plus five. This is the same as doing this, num equals num plus five. Remember that when you create variables, you declare them what's right, take it to what's what's on the right hand side of the equal, take it to the left hand side of the equal sign. Because remember that when you have variable declarations, the way it's set up to work is that whatever, whatever is on the right hand side of the equal sign is going to be assigned to whatever's on the left hand side of the equal sign. So the compiler comes and says, okay, so num at this point is zero. I'm going to add five, zero plus five is five, and I'm going to save it on a variable called num. It doesn't matter if it's bef before it was used, using a zero, it doesn't matter if it's just declared. The point is that it's going to be writing the new variable into the variable called num. So in C++, that can be written as plus equal five. And then we're going to uh, push or write V1. Okay, so this vector now is a whole column in my matrix. Okay. So now this is closing right here. This is my for loop. So let's put it right here. Excellent. Now here is just to write every single value within my matrix. So for int equals zero, i less than vec size, which is two, then increment by one. And then for i equals sorry, int equals j equals zero, and j less than the vector in the row position, sorry, in the column position, take the size from it. So size is a function from the vector library. If you didn't have this here declared, you could not use this size or the pushback functions. Therefore, on a second nested loop, we're gonna say, I less than the size of my columns go one by one, increment of one. And, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm mistaken. So for I is the size of the rows and for J is the size of the columns, okay? And C out vector IJ space end of line. Right, so let's print again and run. So let's see. In the first case is creating a vector of two by two. I'll make, sorry, a, a vector of two by two and... No, I'm sorry. I At this particular point is not creating any size. What it's doing here is a dynamic allocation of memory. So when you look at the output, it's defining global variables two and two, 
or rows and columns, then starts the code, the main functions, and is saying the matrix vec is a vector of vectors, and is going to be type int, and is going to be of a size not known yet, but we're going to, the, the compiler is going to allocate dynamic memory for it until the program tells the compiler what's the size. So for now, the, the so see how power, powerful this becomes because it's allocating space in memory for a matrix. If the matrix ends up being pretty larger than, than it expected, it will go ahead and allocate it wherever it can. So maybe it's not going to be sequential numbers. Maybe one part of the matrix is going to be at the beginning of the RAM and the other part of the RAM is going to be in the middle or last part of the cache. So that's the compiler's problem. The programmer is just writing the matrix and the vector um, or initializing it in this case. And the vector is a type int as well. Okay, so let's see. Right here is saying i equals zero. And now this is where it defines the size. Until two, zero, one, and two, i less than two. And is going to write num for zero, one, and two. So that's why when you see the first output, you see zero and five. Okay, and then vec pushback v1. Now goes to the second one and it says, oh, okay, we already have zero and five. Now we're gonna do the second one, 10 and 15, because it's dynamic. And then that's why it writes 10 and 15. So that's why I have this line commented out. So if you instead defined vector here again, or not again, but instead of here, you define it within the for loop, then this vector is going to be initialized to zero every time. So compile it, run it, and now look, it's a matrix of two by two. Why? Because the first time is going to go, because the, the first time is going to run the, the rows from i to 2, so 0, 1, is less than 2, right? So 0 and 1. And the second time is going to run 10 and 15, but v1 doesn't have any values anymore. v1 was redeclared, so v1 doesn't have any particular size, starting from 0 again, and then it's taking the values from before, but the size is two again. So the difference is that this line right here within the for loop is initialized is the redeclaring the vector so that it doesn't keep growing in size. If you were to change this to three, recompile it, run it. So there you have it. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So you see what it means now. If you were to com comment this line out, and uncomment this line, it's gonna be back to this being declared here dynamically, and then each time is gonna append the values to the vector. So let's recompile and rerun it, and there you have it, 0, 5, 10. The second time it says, oh, I already have something in V1, I'm gonna start appending to it. So 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. And then, is going to be 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So in this particular case, VEC is this guy. If you do this, vec is this guy or the matrix is this okay excellent All right. so let's talk about the while loop we already had an example with the while loop and we're going to back, go back to it to that example because we changed it to a for loop and the while loop is similar to the for loop except for the condition 
needs to be assigned or declared within the body of the loop. So we have a condition. If time equals five o'clock, then do ring a bell. If, okay, so while that's true, something inside is gonna happen. Once the condition becomes false, then it's gonna exit the loop. The way it works is you have your while condition and then actions are performed. Then go back to while until the actions are until the condition is not true anymore. So as we said before, let's go back to example we had initially. This was with the while loop. while loop example zero run excellent so we have uh, m less than five we're gonna have the action of printing m remember that you have to have your your block by um, brackets and you're going to print something and then you're going to do m equals m plus one so the condition here is that the increment is one by one if you say uh, plus two then it's only going to do two times because of the sixth time is not Okay, so if you say m equals m plus 2, what happens here is that it's saying, okay, so at 0, it's true, I'm going to print m, this is iteration 0, then 0 equals 0 plus 2, okay, so this is still less than 5, this is iteration 2, then 2 plus 2 is 4, excellent. Then when six, but six is not less than five. Therefore, you return zero and exit. So this is how your um, while loop works. Let's do another example with an array this time. Let's look at the example. Then you're gonna have your main function you're going to create an array with empty space until you statically declare that it's only going to be five positions, one, two, three, four, and five. Remember that you start from zero using C++ to read the positions of your array. So I equals zero because you're going to read the first position first, or unless you want to read only the third and fourth position. That's You design your code however you want, but at this point I just want to print every position within the code within the array. So for i less than 5, or less than the size of the array, if this changes to 10, then this should change to 10. We're going to print the number i um, and the array. So the first inner int is this i, and the second int is the position of the array. Right. So it's going to be 0, 1, and then the second one is going to be 1, it's going to print a 2. And then we're going to tell the compiler that we're going to increment one by one. So compile it and run it. Element zero is one. Element one is two, etc. So notice that I plus plus is the same as plus plus I. Okay. So this is the while loop. In the while loop, you have to put down the condition. If you don't do this, this has become basically will become a virus that will run your computer forever and ever and ever and ever until you shut it. Okay, so you need the condition within the while loop to tell them when to stop. Excellent. All right. Let's look at another example.
run it. Okay, so this is going to be C out or C out. So let's see what's going on here. So we have int equals one. So uh, the while loop is going to start from one and it's going to go to six because it's less than equal to six. And then print i is, in this case, we don't need to put percent anything because you see how it's not f print. Instead, we put i here and then we end line. And then the condition for increment is one. So if you run it, you have that the value is one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you start this from zero and take this to 60, then you should expect to print all the way to 60. Okay. So this is your limits and this is your increment. You can say AI equals I plus equals I plus 10. So we're going to print a few 6. Yep. Yeah. Or 7 because it starts from 0. And But you can also start from 23. Okay. So we already talked about this, is the nested loops. I wanted to show you the example first so that you see that in a nested loop, the loops within the body, the inner loops run first, and then the outer loops um, execute. So if this goes from zero to nine, the first one is zero to nine, and the second one goes from zero to five, to four, let's say zero to four. In total, those runs 10 times, and this runs five times. Therefore, you're gonna have 10 times five. This will run 50 iterations, right? In total, nine for Y, and it will run four times, sorry, 10 for Y, because it starts from zero unless you say i equals one, but if you start from zero, it's gonna be from zero to nine is 10, and then for zero to five is, from zero to four is five, so it's gonna run 10 times for five um, locations. That's 50 iterations. And, and let's look at these examples now, the 3D array, which could be complicated to see, but it's like a cube, basically. So let's look at this 3D array for nested loops. So let's compile it and say nested loop 3D array. Uh, what's going on here? And we have an error. And let's run it. All right, so we have a three by three by three, or sorry, we have a 3D array, which is three and X, three and Y, and three and Z. So if you were to put one behind each other, you would have a cube where you would have um, three layers of nine points each. So how that goes is basically creating a char array of array of characters that is that has a size of three by three by three and you can have a four or five D array the things that are going to be pretty complicated to see um, but you can do that but honestly you can put 
all that in a single 2D array. So you can have 9 by 9 instead of being 3 by 3 by 3 because at the end if you print this you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 plus 9 plus 9 that's 27. So you can create a way to do a 2D array where you have certain number of rows like 20, I don't know, let's say nine rows and nine columns that would be 18 so that you have some config configuration that you can add this into a 2d array but honestly now that i'm thinking about it, it seems like this is a pretty good because it's symmetric and you can still visualize a three by three by three array with other software you can print you can save this as a comma separated vector or a txt and export it to a um, visualizer or uh, um, some type of software like Paraview or other software that lets you print or plot 3D arrays. So tic-tac-toe is a, an array of three by three by three type two characters. And then we're gonna need three integers, which is X, Y, and Z type int. So X goes from zero to three, that's one, zero, one, and two. Y goes from zero to three, and Z goes to from zero to three. And then in each position, we're going to put a character, a dot. We print tic-tac-toe on screen, and then we're going to print each time we um, print uh, a row and a column. At the end of the nested loop, we're going to print X, Y, and Z. Then we're going to, whenever the two by two, so what? Whenever we are done with the first row and columns, which is Y and Z, then we're going to print a gap, which is this line right here. Then we're going to go to the second set of 2 by 2 and then print another gap. And then by the, uh, at the end, we print the third layer and we exit. Okay. So let's talk about assignment three. It's gonna be very simple. We already did this, so it should be pretty simple for you to do it. You need to take this code and modify it such that instead of using a while, use a um, for. And the thing that you need to do is ask the user for a number and then if the user the user types a 10 then you're gonna print in a for loop the value i is and this goes for 10 times this depends on what the user inputs 